Well, uh, welcome, uh, Jay and Yasser. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you. Um, just this picture alone is going to surprise a lot of people, <laughs> seeing the two of you together smiling, um, given especially what has been the hostility between Liv and the PGA. So let's just start where I think uh, a lot of people have a question is, how in the world did this come about? You know, Jay, I could do a very quick Google search and find lots of not particularly nice things you were saying about not the PIF, but, but live. So tell us the story here. Well, listen, I, I think today is a, it's a historical day for the PGA Tour and the game of golf. Uh, and it's a historical day for the PIF and the DP World Tour. And you're right. You know, there's been a lot of tension in our sport over the last couple of years. But what we're talking about today is coming together to unify the game of golf and to do so under one umbrella. And David, the way that we're doing that is we're creating a for-profit LLC uh, that the PIF is going to invest in alongside the DP World Tour. Uh, and together, we're gonna move forward uh, and we're gonna take efforts to, to grow and expand this great game and to take it to new heights. And so what's happened today and to your earlier question is we've recognized that together we can have a far greater impact on this game than we can working apart. And I give Yasser great credit for coming to, the t t coming to the table, coming to the discussions with an open heart and an open mind. We did the same, and the game of golf is better for what we've done here today. I want to talk about the game of golf and what this will mean. I also want to talk about the structure of this. But just to get a better sense here, have you guys been talking to each other for months? Did you have to make the first call? Uh, you know. I just am curious about a bit of the background here, again, given what has been the hostility between the two, how you sort yeah. of were able to forge what clearly is some sort of a bond now. I received a call from Jimmy Dunn, who's uh, one of the board members at the PGA too. And, um, you know, he just called me and introduced himself and uh, said we would love uh, for us to meet. And I asked him immediately, would you like us to sign an NDA? He said, no, there is no need. And that kind of trust is w how we started the relationship. So we met in London. Um, in a, uh, you know, we uh, had a lunch, followed by uh, uh, the next day a round of golf, then another lunch. We had discussions. We covered everything. And one of the things that I said then, um, had we met two or three years ago, it, the impact that we will have in the game of golf would be lesser. Why? Because it, it would be something small, but the way we're uh, doing uh, our partnership, it's going to be really big in many senses. We will have uh, both uh, LEV and the BGA Tour in addition to all of our uh, assets, and we will be investing in the growth of the game of golf and doing many new things that I think will have a better engagement from the players, the fans, the broadcasters, the sponsors, everyone else, and hopefully to even give a better access for uh, more and more people to the game of golf. The way we would love to uh, make the game of golf very much accessible, just like any other sport, just like football, basketball, any other sport. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what we don't have right now and today. Right. Um, well, Jay, from your perspective, when you, I mean, first yeah. you had a meeting, Jimmy Dunn obviously had this meeting, and it yeah. kind of went from there. Give our viewers now senses to the structure of this. And you've talked a bit about the fact that you're a nonprofit, but you're going to create a for-profit. You're going to merge, essentially, correct, yes. and be a for-profit company, correct? Yes. So the C6, the C6 still stays in place, uh, and out of the C6, we'll continue to operate our tours. Uh, we'll put our player retirement plans and assets there. Um, so that stays in place. I think it's very important. One of the things that's important to both of us is every single week when we're playing tournaments, we're making a huge impact on the communities where you know, we're invited guests. That continues. Uh, and at the C6 level, you take the assets of the PGA Tour, uh, the PIF's ass assets, uh, and live in with the Asian Tour and the DP World Tour. Take all those commercial assets, drop them down 
uh, into that for-profit LLC. This is early. We're going to go through an evaluation of all or evaluation of all of the businesses. And the PIF will invest in NUCO. And importantly, as Yasser is quick to point out, there'll be an additional investment and growth initiatives. And that's what's really exciting here. Um, there are two elements. To, to be unified as it relates to the tours and then to be able to go out. You know, in our own model, David, we've been somewhat handicapped in that as a C6, we're a pass-through organization. Now to have the, this for-profit uh, LLC, to have the PIF and Yasser investing in it, for him to serve on our board, to serve as chair of the board uh, of, of NUCO, puts us in a position where we can go out and we can address some opportunities in the marketplace. And to be clear, NUCO is LIV, it's PGA. And the DP World and Tour. And it's DP yes. World. But you've got to figure out, this is a, a memorandum of understanding. You don't have a definitive agreement yet, right? So what has to happen, Yasser, before you get to a definitive agreement? We will do the valuation. That's the starting uh, point. We agreed on the framework, uh, which is uh, something really great and excellent first step. Once we uh, get the valuation um, uh, agreed uh, on from uh, both. So you've got a value, Liv, you've got a value PGA, essentially. The, their commercial rights, because right. the PGA will stay outside, and then but their commercial That will rights. then trigger whatever the capital commitment initially is going to be from the, from the PIS? So, so initially, we will just do the valuation. Uh, we will create uh, the board. Uh, the board will be... Uh, uh, the majority will be from the PGA tour. Uh, You'll be chairman. I'll, I'll be chairman. Jay will be the CEO of the new company. Uh, the idea is to keep everything independent, but strategically they're all aligned. So the idea that we have, instead of uh, competing, we're going to be complementing and to look for additional venues. And that's where the, the PIF investments, capital investments will come in, will kick in. So uh, we'll be uh, either creating, acquiring, doing some new things to grow the game of golf. What would those and, be? I mean, give me some sense here in terms of, let's, let's go down the road a bit. This, is, this entity has been absolutely. created. What are you going to call on the, on the PIF for funds for? for well, so you look, at, you look at the structure of our sport. You look at our schedule itself. There's a lot of fragmentation. There's a lot of different golf organizations. That creates inefficiencies. We can address that and we see real opportunity right in, in that alone. You look at the structure of the, of the tour today. We've talked a lot about sports betting. You've talked, we've talked a lot about our data business, our proprietary data business and investments that we can make there, not only uh, at the tour level, but also across uh, our sport generally. Uh, we've got 29 clubs in our TPC portfolio, uh, the real estate and club business uh, we think there's real opportunity, particularly when you look at, at it alongside some so of the biggest tournaments in the well. world. New events? Yeah, we'll new be investing. Courses, we'll, new courses? Know. New events, new courses, new technology, uh, new, new initiatives that are tied to growth of the game all over the world. But ultimately, David, if you're a player today or you're a fan today, uh, the initial investment in time is going to be in looking out 10 years and what is the right structure for the game at the highest level? How do you inspire people to get there? How do you use the PGA Tour and the DP World Tour schedules today? The innovation that the PIF has put into, into Live Golf, Team Golf in particular. And how do you move forward in a way where you're not only bringing the sport to more people as it relates to the highest expression of it uh, at the men's professional game, but additionally, you're finding a way to bring t team golf to a much broader audience around the yeah, world. Tell me a bit about the yeah. innovations that you just talked about. I mean, again, you're saying positive things yeah. about live. People yeah. may be surprised. But what was it about what they were able to do, for example, that you did admire? Team golf, you've mentioned. Anything else? I, I think, number one, it's a passion for the game of golf that you, you see, you feel, experience every single conversation that you have with this man. Um, and, and that passion manifests itself in in a belief in innovation, in a belief in continuing to push boundaries. And I think that in and of itself, with us restructuring our business and being in a position to utilize the power of the PGA Tour brand, use the power of our scale alongside uh, a great partner and a great investor, that's, 
that's what's gotten us here, and right. that's what should be most exciting for people and families. Now, sir, we're, are, we're talking about potentially billions of dollars being invested from the PIF, correct? Correct. Over what period of time? That's an excellent question. So the first step is today. Uh, the second one is the, you know, the definitive uh, agreement. Then we are creating the board. And the governance of the whole thing is we will evaluate every proposal that will come to us at the board level. So whatever it takes, that's how much is the commitment that uh, we are committed for. Do you expect to consolidate all these other entities as well? Are you creating one entity for global golf, essentially? Exactly. That's, that's the idea. And uh, the potential there is really big. I mean, if you look at the, uh, the uh, size of uh, golf, monetary-wise, it's about $100 billion, uh, today. And I think the, the growth is, uh, is there. And I think we can, working together, we can have a faster growth rate than um, uh, the way it was for the past, you know, 10 or 20 years. David, if I could add, I think sure. when, you look at, when you look at the game on a global basis, there are now more people playing the game outside the U.S. than playing mm -hmm. inside the United States. Okay, you look at everything that has transpired in terms of the forms of distribution, um, Top Golf, and all the other ways that people can interface with our sport. There are now people off course, more off course participants than on course participants, and that combined audience in the U.S. is 48 percent under the age of 35. Reaching a younger demographic at a time when the sport has never been more popular and doing so by coming together to collaborate at this point in time, that's where we see the commonality and purpose and that's where we see this huge opportunity. What are your, what are your expectations, Jay, for when the public learns about this, the players, the fans? Do you think they're going to respond positively? I mean, you're describing a scenario under which PIF at some point could have the majority of the economics, mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, of okay. this entity. Essentially, the Saudis sort of, people will say, oh, they control golf around the world. I'm just curious as to what you think the response is going to be. Well, listen, a lot of people have been reading about the tension. Um, and that, we've talked a lot. Um, and I said previously that we were going down our path, they were going down theirs. And today, that tension goes away. The litigation has dropped. We're announcing to the world that on behalf of this game, we're coming together. And it's, it's less about how people respond today, and it's all about how people respond in 10 years. And w when they see the impact that we're having on this game together, there will be a lot of smiles on people's faces, and there will be a lot more people playing this game all over the world. And if you're a young player that wants to get to the highest level of the game today, you'll be more inspired than you've ever been before. And if I may add. Yes, here. please. So even if um, the capital contribution <clears throat> uh, for the PIF will be at, at some stage or after the uh, valuation process bigger than the contribution of the BJA, still the control and at the board level is for the BJA. The governance stays with the, the BJA. The governance, except for you know certain uh, things. Uh, that has to have the full uh, board. Approved. We will uh, full board, board of, uh, approval. But um, the normal uh, uh, circumstances, the control is still there. We are there for a number of things, you know, uh, to have the right governance, to have the right uh, business uh, pro propositions, and uh, to make uh, the growth. But the control, we trust the BJA tool. We, we understand and we honor and we respect the history that the BJA tour uh, has. And uh, uh, after meeting uh, Jay a number of times, I mean, we met initially, we didn't meet in uh, London. I met with uh, Jamie and Ed, but um, he came with Jamie and Ed to Venice. Then we went to San Francisco and uh, again in New York. So there was okay, so that many little world meetings. tour, huh? <laughs> exactly, it was. Uh, and there was so many meetings and we had so many discussions, deep discussions, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one and with the group. I mean, I remember the first time uh, we met, we just sat down, uh, uh, him and I, in, in a, uh, 
uh, in Venice for about two hours trying to understand each other. So we just sat down. He uh, uh, talked about, um, you know, uh, his basically uh, aspirations, his life. I did the same thing too. Um, even my family was with me yes. there in Venice. We had, uh, you know, a lunch uh, with a, a big group of uh, uh, people. So I think the understanding and um, uh, and the um, uh, positive th thinking is what really unite us in growing the, the, the game of golf. Right. The passion that we have, both of us, I think uh, is what really uh, uh, cemented this kind of uh, agreement. Yeah, so though, what are your expectations in terms of the public response to this? Again, Saudi Arabia comes in for criticism, for example, from people who are advocates for human rights and things of that nature. It's sure to get mixed up in that, this yeah. idea that the Saudis now control, again, I understand governance, but that's going to be the headline, control the game we love. Uh, you know, I'm just curious as to how you've thought through We that. are investing in the game that everybody loves. The control is uh, not there. It's the governance that we would like uh, to have. It's going to be, you know, a vote system in a board, and the majority and the board will be with the BJ. It's right. not going to be uh, with uh, with us. I think, um, and I, I, hear, I heard this uh, many times in different, um, you know, uh, investments. That, I'm sure, right? That, it comes that, up that a lot. We, we've yeah. done, like you know, what we've done in Newcastle. We had the same thing. But if you look at the turnaround story that we made in Newcastle was really a case study by itself. In less than one and a half year, we turned a team that was, um, you know, threatened to be in the relegation all the way up to the fourth uh, uh, position in the uh, English Premier League. The same thing I think we will do with our new company between uh, the BGA and ourselves. What is it with uh, the Saudis and sports? <laughs> Uh, what do you see in terms of it? You clearly value this idea of these global franchises. Yes. Uh, you know, I mean, I've, I've talked about, you know, WWE or F1, just in terms of the interest there. Um, not to mention, of course, what we call soccer. The rest of the world calls, calls <laughs> football. Because but, it's, it's, you know, a ball and a foot. I get and That's it. why football. I, I, you're, you're right. <laughs> We're wrong. But anyhow. Um, but what about the value? What is it that you see as an investor, one of the largest funds available in the world to you, so what, uh, what, that is so compelling? What's, what's going on right now is in Saudi is unprecedented anywhere else in the world. We started with something called the Vision 2030 by the Crown Prince. And this vision was uh, announced back in uh, 2017. PIF is one of the major components of this vision. Now, in, uh, at the PIF, back in 2017, we issued our first five-year document, which is called Vision Realization Program. We put all of our aspirations and targets and objectives and KPIs, and by the end of the 2020, uh, we achieved all of these targets, you know, the job creations, the GDP contributions, the sector developments, and everything else. Back in um, uh, January 2021, we issued the second vision realization program. And by the way, it's a public document. It's in our website. And yep. you can have access to it. In that document, we said we're going to be looking and interested in 13 different sectors. Sports and entertainment is one of these uh, sectors, in addition to aerospace, technology, and But why sports sectors. and entertainment? Why sports if you look in particular? At the, if you look at the, uh, you know, the population of Saudi Arabia, a huge percentage of our population under the age of, I think, 75% is under the age of 35. Now, uh, with, with that, I think you will have a lot of young people who are interested in sports and entertainment. And that's basically part of the offering. The, uh, historically speaking, football was the, uh, the uh, dominant sport in Saudi. Um, in the past, uh, I think, um, uh, eight, maybe uh, five years ago, we created different number of uh, federations for every sport that you can think of. So we are interested in, uh, in, all, of, um, in all of these um, uh, sports. It's not only golf or football or uh, right. basketball, but it's many other uh, uh, sports there. 
that's that's the reason why we would like to to invest in sport in addition to the financial returns so it there makes, are financial returns that we're oh, talking definitely. about here without definitely. a doubt so it all I, makes financial sense to us and that's the only way uh, going forward we don't like to subsidize things but we would like to have it uh, sustainable so you think the, the billions way. that you'll be investing in this new entity are going to generate a significant oh, that's return. Right. That's, that's the whole idea. Why? Do you, why? Listen, PGA Tour has been around since 1968. I mentioned to you earlier our, our model. We're transitioning from a C6 to a C6 plus a for-profit LLC. This is an opportunity we've never had before. And to have this capital at this point in time with the strength of this game, um, there's just there's so much opportunity. And it's opportunity we have not been able to activate but we will now, and we're going to do it in a highly disciplined, rigorous way. And when you, when you look at our sport, the PGA Tour has never been stronger than it is right now. And it's strong because of the way our players continue to compete, the legacy-driven pro-competitive model. There are different ways to interface with our sport. To come together and do this together with DP World Tour, PIF, and other organizations as we move forward creates opportunity at scale that we haven't been able to see or do. So it will produce an investment return. Otherwise, we would not be here right now. I mean, right. That is and you the think whole that any issues at all moving from that not-for-profit to for-profit? you think you're going to get any, again, pushback at all? Or? I don't. I mean, I think you look at the, our membership organization and the way that we treat our members doesn't change at all. Right. Um, you know, there are certainly precedents for this model in other sports, and um, we're very confident. And, Jay, I just hearing the global golf, yeah. essentially, in one entity, I, I wonder, antitrust, is there any concern that regulators are going to say, wait a second, you, know, you have two competitive tours now and you're combining? Um, every, is that a concern? Every single player in men's professional golf is going to have more opportunity and more growth as we look to contribute to the women's game. I would expect the same. And as an industry, we're going to grow our industry. So I, I, I think this is all this is all um, a positive uh, on that front. What happens to players issues. on Live Now? Will they eventually be able to play? Listen, over, we've, how does that work when you're when you're part of their tour and not yours? We've today we've come together to announce that we're collaborating going forward. There's a lot of work to be done. There's a strong spirit of partnership. Those are the details that, you know, that we'll be getting into. Um, but ultimately, uh, the world needs to know that the PGA Tour, PIF, DP World Tour have come together, and the tension's gone, and these are things that we're going to solve together. And the litigation's gone as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a couple of final questions here. Television rights. Yeah. I mean, if you were successful here, it would seem as though you can negotiate sort of a, a different kind of a package. Is that, is that true? or? What does it mean in terms of the rights here if you are successful in sort of putting it all together? I think describe? these are the kind of discussions that we'll have going forward once we have identified, step back, evaluate the PGA Tour, live the DP World Tour, identified the path and plan forward. It's going to create opportunities across the media landscape. And we've got great media partners. Uh, I know they're going to be excited about this announcement today. Um, and we're going to create more value for them. And those are discussions that we'll have. Yes, sir. How much more time to get to the definitive agreement, in your opinion, from here? I think it's a matter of weeks. Uh, we we uh, we have agreements on um, you know the framework, which is an excellent uh, first step, and uh, it all depends on um, uh, on you know just um, finalizing uh, uh, many things, including the evaluation. Once we get uh, uh, that in, I think it's it's just a matter of weeks. We're going to get that done. You're going to get it done. Yes. You guys are both confident. This is not some memor memorandum of understanding that we're going to have a big announcement around and then never see the No, definitive. next time we're together with you, we're going to be talking about what we've done and more specifically about where we're going. We're not going to be having a conversation about why this didn't happen. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm happy to hear that we're going to do this again at some point soon. That's good, <laughs> good as well. What are your expectations, you know, in terms of... Uh, the valuation process, though, yeah, sir. Uh, you, I, I mean, specifics here because I like M and A. You, do you have different advisors who are going to come to some sort of have to come to some sort of agreement in terms of what this uh, is uh, worth uh, and uh, that end of these worth? Absolutely. So I mean, uh, you know, there are different methodologies of uh, valuation. 
the way it will be, we will have our own advisors, they will have their own advisors, and most likely we will have uh, an additional independent advisor that gives fairness opinion for both uh, shareholders, and uh, then we'll move on. Does Greg Norman know about this? Um, he is. Uh, I, I made the call just before uh, this, and of course, um, he's um, uh, a partner with us, and um, all the stakeholders that we have, uh, we have with us they had the call just right before this interview. Well, a lot of people will certainly be interested and surprised, of course. Gentlemen, it's been great to have you both and certainly appreciate it. And we'll be watching closely. I look forward to the next interview. <laughs> Thank Ramani. you, David. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir.